So let's start with the status of the cruise liners directly affected by the virus. How has their business been affected? Uh, the Asian uh, base ships have been devastated in that their, uh, their cruises have been canceled. Uh, the ports that they normally went to no longer accept them, so they've had to cancel a great number of cruises. And obviously people plan a lot of these things in advance. So how are companies addressing current and future passengers' concerns? In some cases, they're giving refunds for the canceled cruises or making other options like uh, credit, credits towards a uh, future cruise. And in other cases, there, there's been incidents where uh, they, the passengers decided not to go on the cruise and didn't travel and therefore didn't get a refund. So outside of money, obviously we know that outbreaks are just one type of public relations nightmare that can happen for a travel company. How does one overcome the perception issues? Well, uh, a cruise ship uh, is not a floating petri dish as some people would think. Uh, they uh, disinfect the ship, they move the ship to other locations. So, and then they'll bring it back when it's safe to, when uh, people are traveling again and the ports are open. So I know we started by talking about Asia, but how has the financial impact been on the entire industry so far? Uh, the Asian market uh, has about uh, 10, or the Chinese market has about 10% of the global capacity. So the whole industry is going to take a hit since all the three, the uh, major cruise uh, corporations are involved in Asia, so they'll show some hit. But the industry is very resilient. The ships can leave an area where there's problems and go to an area where there isn't problem, where there are no problems. And the industry then can discount to fill the ships. And once they get people on board the ships, people spend the money. So then in terms of these locations then, talk about the industry strategy when it comes to catering to Asian and particularly Chinese travelers as part of their overall growth strategy. Uh, over the last, uh, say since 2010, a great deal of effort has been put into China, uh, bringing new ships directly out to China. So this is quite a blow. Uh, but uh, like I said, Ships are going to be moved to other areas and they'll be brought back when things are uh, better. How have they catered to Chinese uh, passengers? Through menus, uh, food for Chinese passengers, uh, more uh, private dining areas in the dining rooms, uh, connecting cabins so you can have multi-generational travel, and also itineraries that appeal to Chinese travelers. For example, the itineraries out of Shanghai to Japan. So then before this outbreak happened, how would you have rated the health of the cruise industry overall? Oh, it was quite good. It, it was quite good. So we, we might see a short uh, setback this year, but then I'm sure it'll pick up again. And speaking of perceptions, obviously some people aren't sure what kind of person likes to take cruises. What sort of efforts are being made to attract new customers? Uh, lots of different, uh, what uh, Royal Caribbean would call the wow factor, like uh, bumper cars, ice skating rinks, uh, roller coasters, uh, Broadway level shows, Las Vegas level shows, uh, all to attract new passengers. A, uh, a myriad of uh, dining venues on the ship, where on the biggest ship, if you travel on it for a week, you couldn't eat in all the dining venues twice. So, so, so certainly a lot of opportunity there. And speaking of that, where do you see the biggest opportunities and also the biggest challenges for the industry? Uh, the biggest growth, growth area is in Asia. And that's also a challenge because uh, to acquaint people with the cruise product and uh, move away from the view of cruising as uh, uh, gambling at sea into more of a vacation form get passengers to travel on the cruises in Asia, and then move them to the Mediterranean, to the Caribbean, uh, once they sample cruising and want to try again. All right, thank you so much. Andrew Coggins, the Clinical Professor of Management at the Lubin School of Business at Pace University.